there's a very special event coming up on June 10, a solar eclipse. I am super excited, even though I won't be able to see it from here in Hawaii. Many people in Canada, you, my family, my friends, will be able to see either a total or a partial eclipse of the sun. And this is super rare. Hi, my name is Laurie Rousseau-Nepton. I am a member of the Pequot Camille Noest Nation in Quebec and an astronomer working in Hawaii at the Canada-France Hawaii Telescope. Ah, solar eclipses. So many communities around the world are sharing tales about these phenomena. And today I want to share with you two stories that are from Canada uh, that I adapted specially for this occasion. The first one comes from the Inuit territory. In a time when darkness covered the earth, Melina and her brother Anangan lived in a village. Using the darkness to hide, someone was disturbing Melina at night. One night, with the hope of finding out who it was, Melina spread dirty black grease all over the mystery face. And using a lamp, she looked at everyone's face to find out that her brother was the culprit. Very mad, she grabbed a brand from the fire and started chasing him. Anangan ran into the sky and Melina flew after him. He then transformed into the moon and Melina with the fiery brand into the sun. During the pursuit, sparks got spread around from the brand and became the stars. They have now chased each other in the sky for immemorial time. And again, often forgets to eat. And so he gets thinner and thinner as days go by. Every month, the moon disappears for a few days while Anangan eats. Then the chase continues. This eternal cycle makes the sun alternate in the sky with the moon. When there's a solar eclipse, Anangan has caught up with Melina, and Melina is known to be the goddess of the sun, while Anangan, the god of the moon for the Inuit people. Now the second story comes from multiple communities in Canada, from the East Coast and Central Canada, including the Inu, the Ojibwe, the Cree, and others. And it goes as, in the old days, people were not the chiefs and did not hunt animals. Animals were the chief and hunted people. They killed everyone except one girl and her little brother. The boy learned to hunt snowbirds and squirrels with a bow and arrow. He became such a good hunter that he started catching bigger prey. And one day, he felt like something was following him. His sister helped him fashion a snare and he set it along a melted path in the snow. It was the sun's path. As the sun rose, he got cut into the snare and darkness followed. The animals were afraid, but amazed by the boy. They sent the biggest and most fearsome animal to try to free the sun. The caribou and the moose went first, but it was too hot. The hunting birds flew, but the fire burned their feather. It was a tiny mouse who in those days was as big as a mountain that chewed through the snare, freeing the sun. But meanwhile, the intense heat shrunk him down to his present size. Since that time, the people have been hunting on the land and the sun and the moon follow their cycle. That little boy is Sekabish and he's known as the man on the moon. This story is actually tightly related to annular eclipses, during which you still see a line of light around the moon, so that's there, and the moon is Sekabish who's catching it. So we can now predict when solar eclipse happens. So be prepared and have your solar filters. And oh, don't forget to put your alarm clock super early on June 10 and catch the solar eclipse.